Hello, my friends. I recorded yesterday. Um, figured I'd hop back on and do some more OLT laddering just because I need to be doing more of these games. I said I was going to play some more off camera, but I only got to play one game uh, between yesterday's video and this one. So, but yeah, I figured I'd get back to doing a little thought of the day here. Um, this is sparked by a conversation that I had in the Academy chat um, on the Discord. And uh, I had said, uh, I'd noticed something, practicing Mons has become part of my morning routine this past week. This is in the Just for Jam channel, by the way. If y'all didn't know that you could interact directly with Mr. Jambed himself in the Academy with this little channel here. It's really cool. But anyway, I had said, uh, it's become part of my morning routine, basically. Super beneficial. I always feel better. Wake up, practice moms, do some training for you know the job I have, and I go about the rest of my day. So it's actually uh, doing. It's actually really good to practice. And uh, obviously, Jam thought it was interesting. He said, "Never thought about using it as sort of a mental warm up, like how people warm up in physical martial arts, and that's anything, right?" But that just kind of furthers the point I've been making that. Physical, mental, you know, the process is the same and you can treat it the same. Um, just get just get your muscles firing, right? Get them activated. Get your mental processes firing. Get it activated. There's a lot of parallels. I, I haven't really thought about it that way uh, until recently either. But usually when I have some time to play is in the morning, right? I found that uh, it seems to feel more fresh, clearer afterwards. Um... And this is the part that I kind of wanted to capitalize on today, is that I always thought of competitive mods when done right, it can uh, really exercise your basic mental problem solving processes, right? And it's unique as opposed to something like chess, right? It gets uh, it gets compared to chess uh, because learning how to get around and avoid luck situations, right? When it's possible, it, that's a skill in itself within the game. And there's a lot of transfer to real life in that. It can teach you a lot. It helps prepare for the real life day by thinking of these things in a more healthy way, right? Because these, these things are going to happen. Uh, but I saw a quote recently that life is only 10% what happens to you, and it's 90% how you respond to it. Right? So I, th I think, and like I just said, <laughs> I, I hopped on shortly after saying this, so... Here's the thought of the day, which segues into the other topic I wanted to talk about, which is why Pokemon, right? And the first, there's two really two levels to that question. Um, first off is because, you know, people who have, for us who have uh, grown up playing the Pokemon games, nostalgia, right? Nostalgia is on another level, and um, the creators of the Pokemon games have nostalgia down to an art. And they're masters of utilizing it, even from the first generation. But that's another conversation. Um, but basically, it's something we can resonate with. And that's what keeps a lot of players coming back, myself included as a return player. Uh, we want something more out of this game that we all loved as kids and continue to love. That's why we take it competitively, because there becomes more layers to it when you do that. There becomes an interpersonal aspect to it. There becomes a competitive aspect to it, a strategic aspect to it, and most importantly, a growth aspect to it. This is how the game we all love continues to challenge us, is if we take it to the next level. Uh, but then, you know, the other reason, the other layer of that question is um, what I just said, right? Well, what I had mentioned in the in the academy chat. This game is actually very beneficial from a strategic standpoint. From a psychological standpoint, it can exercise and train a lot of the basic problem-solving processes in your mind. Um, I've always thought um, over the years that you could really tell how someone is doing mentally if they're an experienced um, competitive Pokemon player. You can tell how they're doing mentally based on how they're playing the game lately. Right. There have been moments where some of my friends who, you know, are not, who have been playing, um, and who have been playing bad recently, who are not, in an uncharacteristic manner, I should say, have been just been playing badly, and I've had to go check up on them and be like, hey, bro, are you okay? Like, 
this is this game this is not this is not typical of you is there something you talk about it's lo and behold there's something in their life is bothering them and they're distracted and they're uh yeah and so it's it's just interesting it's an indicator of mindset really and mental state uh and so it can also tell a lot about you know how people are doing emotionally given that you know they have the equipment um they have the mental equipment to play well the experience and everything but yeah it's a it's a great growth tool and uh obviously like i said growth is something that can be applied to anything competitive pokemon is just the vehicle we use in order to grow in something right something that we all enjoy but it's unique as opposed to something like chess that gets compared to chess because chess almost has no luck aspect pokemon does and that's actually a good thing about pokemon one, because it keeps it, keeps it exciting on a surface level. But two, because it actually shows you more about real life. And it actually shows you how to get around these things and grow. And uh, improve despite these things. Because guess what? That's going to happen in your real life too. Things you can't control. Anyways, let's, um, let's go ahead and dive into the actual playing. I am going to... Uh, bring the Manaphy balance back because I'm starting from 1500 and I believe this is you know I don't know how it is right now actually but this is where we get a lot of stall stuff and this team is pretty well equipped equipped rather to handle stall because of the hazard stack and because of the knockoff here and uh, yeah it's pretty well equipped to handle that um, and I will you can watch the other video if you want to analysis of the team, but I'll link it again here in the description. But I figured this one will be appropriate for the part of the ladder we're entering, just historically. Again, I'm not sure what it is right now, but uh, yeah, let's grab some games. Um, all right, Jake Paul, let's do some Pokemon. Ah, uh, yes, Sinistra, my favorite Pokemon. Okay, so he has Garganackle. Sinistra, Samurott, Hisui, uh, Claude Sire, Moltres, and Weavile. I have Manaphy, Tinglu, Skarmory, Slowking, Great Tusk, and Iron Valiant. Now, I've not been practicing with this team before this uh, video, so let's see how this goes. Alright, so the Garganackle will be pivoted upon, likely by the Slowking, depending on if it's... Um, well, if it's Curse and it's Earthquake, then... Solo King will pivot all over it, outspeed with the chili reception most likely. Um, let's see here. I'm looking at a Terra Manaphy here just early on, maybe, but that too early in the process to determine that. Uh, the Sinus Cha likely answered by a Slow King slash Iron Valiant combination. Great Tusk probably with Ice Spinner can do a decent amount of damage. I like hazard stack against this. If I can just knock off a lot. Uh, hopefully knock off into the Moltres. Hopefully it don't get burned. But again, the, the raw damage there is not what's going to win this game. So the, the Weavile. Uh, well, let's not jump ahead. So the, the Samurott. Uh, Tusk can do a good amount versus it. Uh, Skarmory too. Uh, Iron Valiant offensively. The Claude Sire. The Tinglu, the Manaphy, the Great Tusk, uh, the Psy Shock Val in some situations if conditions are met. Moltres, Tinglu, Slow King, Manaphy, uh, Weavile, Skarmory, uh, obviously Iron Valiant if still retaining Scarf, Great Tusk with a bulk up if I'm fire. And how do I lead from here? You ask. I believe I lead with. Iron Valiant. I see my calculator is working again, which I'm grateful for. Uh, let's go ahead and take a chunk off this Claude Sire because I believe it's inclined to stay in. Unless it guesses that I'm source, some sort of scarf or uh, choice set and guesses that I'm Psy Shock, but we'll see. All right, that's good. Good stuff. Alright, so now it's going to benefit me, I think, to go ahead and switch out ahead of his switch out. Um, 
or you know, in the slightest chance, he um, he Terra Darks here. I've seen I've seen Claude Sires do that. So in which case, staying in is useless anyway. So I think I go Great Tusk here. Yeah, that was not a bad call. Let's go ahead and bulk up. He brings in the Sinus Ja. Um, now I don't like his Giga Drain here. I don't like that at all. But I don't know if I want to blow my Terra so early. Although, I'm not sure what he does otherwise. Unless he's like, hmm. So that's a condition that I think I'll need to meet first. Is probably throw rocks up, get a possible Sash out of the way. Um, because if I Terra Fire, that also means that Moltres can't burn me if I spam my Spinner. So that's also good to keep in mind. But I also might be running Scorching Sand. So I'll need to be wary of that. If it is, it can possibly just kill me. If I'm Terrifier, especially. So here's how I pivot on this, I believe. Yeah, and that's the other reason. All right, I believe I go ahead and just chilly out here, and that is not good. Let's see. All right, I bring in Val, I believe. Knock off. And we wait for him to make a move. Okay, he's boots, match a gotcha. Ooh, that did a lot. Ah, see. Sinus Jaw's annoying. Okay, um, eventually what I need to get is I need to get this uh, Manaphy going. That's going to be the best thing. I'll go ahead and let go of this Iron Valley in here. Lay down some spikes. And I will whirlwind this out. Taking a lot on the Ting Wu, but hopefully I'm going to invest that later just for the sake of getting that set up because he has no removal. That's That's been a trend lately. I don't know why these teams don't have removal. As if knockoff isn't a thing. So he's Boots Weavaw. get the hazards up at all costs here and the reason I wasn't too concerned about you know Weavile hitting the Tinglu is because Manaphy is going to cover the Moltres anyway once I get that rolling so and I, and I think it's more important that that Weavile does not Swords Dance because that would be game over for me get these rocks here. This is going to be like my only opportunity to do so, I think. Right. Okay. Bring in the Slow King. Chili. Nice. And he's giving me an opening here to get Manaphy started. Oh, he's Roar. Okay. Good to know. Okay, he's Boots Sam. So. Now, with the hazard stack, his um his boots are gone. Right. So I just hard ice spinner here. Let's see what 
what should I do? Oh no. Oh no, I made a terrible mistake. I just made a horrible mistake. <laughs> uh, boy, okay. So now I got a chili. Get Manaphy going. I have to Terra here because I made that mistake. I should not have assumed that he was going to switch out. Acid armor here for good measure. Uh, let's see. Take heart one more time. How much is it going to take for me to smoke this thing? Oh my gosh. My friends, I played this very poorly. It's possible that I still come out on top, but we'll see. He probably tears the Garganackle because it's broken. Yeah, right. Okay. Get this out of here. There's a salt cure. Um. Do I go ahead and just headlong here? I think I do. Please set up again. All right. Um, Just tough stuff, man. Okay. Sometimes we have bad games like that, just mentally. But this is why we come practice. I think I'm going to switch teams. I'm going to go back to the Dark Fairy offense because that's the one I've been practicing with most. So I'm going to come back to this. And we have an interesting team here. If you want to see the analysis for this one, I can also link this one in the description. And you can also watch the previous video. The one with the roaring moon in the thumbnail. That's the one. Okay, so we have a Blaziken, a Yan Mega, a Mammoth Swine. Mousehold, a Gallade, and an Inteleon. Very interesting team. Not a single one of those Pokemon are OU, so this should be interesting. Primarina of Iron Valiant, Landris, King Gambit, Roaring Moon, Cinderace. Alright, so the Blaziken uh, between Landris and Primarina can be checked. Um, a Booster Energy Valiant can potentially, you know, pick it off if it's not Protect, getting free plus two. Speed, um, yeah, the Yan Mega, potentially Primarina if it gets set up enough, because I realize, I realize it has sound moves, but it's got a type advantage. Um, Cinderace is going to be pretty good, but that's also speed boost, so we have to be careful around it. Uh, Mammoth Swine, uh, I have an Air Balloon King Gambit, so that's a one-off against that. Um, Landris is not checking it because it's got that really powerful ice move. Usually Landris can take one ice spinner from Great Tusk, but that's Great Tusk. This is a Mammoth Swine. Um, mouse Hold. Uh, Landris can probably punish the Mouse Hold pretty well. Uh, plus one Iron Valiant can outspeed the Mouse Hold after a tidy up. I could play Sucker Punch games if needed. Um, 
I have Terragos Primarina though, and that might be actually really clutch. So, and we have the Gallade, which probably Landris is key against as well. Cinderace is going to be good to potentially burn it. Uh, Inteleon can be blocked to an extent by Roaring Moon and Primarina. Primarina more so. But anyways, time to get uh, started here. I think Landris is a good lead. Didn't get to finish the uh, last part of that process there. Now, how much you want to bet he's Ice uh, Ice Punch? Does that get Ice Punch? I, I would assume that it does. Yeah, it does. I was right. I was correct. Hmm. He psycho cuts. Muy interesante. Scarf Glade, interesting. All right. Well, what that tells me is that I can do this, and then what if that Mammoth Swine? If that Mammoth Swine is banded, then there's no way that Roaring Moon survives. Is that right? You know what? Go ahead and kill me. Go ahead. You've revealed Scarf. Right? Yeah, you did. So... I think Mammoth Swine doesn't kill it. Okay. Heavy, but I'm not sure what else anything does to it. That's gonna be funny if this is GG right here. I'm gonna laugh so hard. Okay, knockoff does. He did not click shard, wow. Yeah, I think you're done, my friend. <laughs> Bro changed characters. Reconnected, disconnected, might be an internet thing, but I doubt it after that play. He might just be trying to leave. You know, I think what happens sometimes on Showdown is that, um, you know, somebody clicks X, right, and then it just fails to forfeit the game for them. Just sometimes, not all the time. And so you get situations like this, because I think they just clicked X, trying to forfeit but it, whether it be just like the communication with their computer versus the server that causes that or something. Anyway. Okay, well there's a win. It's better. You know what I should have done? I should have saved that replay where I was playing very poorly. Ah, uh, great. Dang it. It's okay, well I have the recording here. I have the recording. This kind of reminds me of something that my friends in PKS are doing lately. They're making it a point to post their losses, right? And to post games where they did not play well in the spirit of true improvement. And I, I really, really like that idea and I need to do better about posting in there losses and stuff like that. And so I, what I'll probably do is clip the video actually and I will just send it in that chat just so we can, you know, I can open myself up for good critique because we're all good bros in there, and brothers and sisters and everything. We have a we have a really good working relationship as far as growth is concerned, and uh, we're we're really good friends. PKS is great, man. Uh, I would invite more people, but it is invite only. So, but anyways, um, and I'm not the head honcho in there. But anyway, let's get another game, and uh, yeah, some good material to work with here. So that game was a lot better. 
uh, much better from a strategic standpoint, I think. So let's keep on going. I'm back up into 1500 there after a really sloppy loss. I shouldn't have ever let that game go, I think. Oh, you too. Have fun, my friend. Uh, Blufferfish, 2009. Excla excla exclamation point, rather. Okay. So he has the Ogre Pond, the Raging Bolt, the Great Tusk, the Heatran, the Enamorous, and the King Gambit. Very dangerous team. Or she does. I don't know who's behind that avatar. Every time it's a female avatar, I mean, you actually just never know. Okay, so I have the Primarini, the, the Primarini, the Primarina, the Iron Valiant, the Landorus, the King Gambit, the Roaring Moon, and Cinderace. So, the Ogre Pond can be burned by the Cinderace if I'm feeling desperate. The Iron Valiant can revenge it. Um, yeah, that's a dangerous Pokemon. So I think the offensive, I think offensively is going to be the way to answer most of this. Jam posted a really good uh, post the other day on his YouTube channel, his, his community page, about um, opportunity and positioning. So let's just not give that Ogre Pond the opportunity to utilize its offensive matchup against my team here. Which is, this is offense, so that's what I'm supposed to be doing anyway. Anyway, moving faster, Raging Bolt, Landorus, uh, Great Tusk, Landorus also, and Prey Marina. Uh, Heatran, Landris again, and Primarina can outmaneuver it. Enamorous, uh, Cinderace probably is the best bet. And, uh, King Gambit, Cinderace, Landris, Iron Valiant, my own King Gambit if need be. So I think Landris is a pretty safe lead here, even if he leads the Ogre. Just to get an Intimidate off. Okay, Raging Bolt. I believe I just Hard Quake right here. Alright. Perhaps catch it with the Grass Knot. Yeah, there we go. There's the Enam. What do I do here? Let's see. If it is Moon Blast. I think the only thing he clicks is Moon Blast. To be honest. Now I believe here a U-turn, especially since he has the Heatran in the back, right? Pyro Ball was never the play. Let's see. I can use this opportunity to get to throw some rocks up. Alright, he goes in Amorous again. Mm, something tells me he this person clicks earth power but I'm not sure of that but see I don't want to just take a moon blast either because that's a lot of value off of my most important mon so what's least important ask it that way mm. well in the analysis phase I didn't say much about roaring moon Gets blocked by a lot because it's not running Earthquake. So the Heatran can take a really powerful knockoff, potentially. Mm. Don't like this. Prim has a lot of SPDF impact, so let's see if it can... Alright, so we go, we go Cinderace again. The Cinderachi. We'll always go Hardlanders on this. Have to. Mm, ouch. That hurt. That hurt pretty bad. Alright, Valiant can take some value pretty well. Um, well, actually, let me do some... Uh, I needed to calc that before I did it, but yeah, looks like I can combat here. Good. Good deal. That's one less problem for Roaring Moon, actually. Surprised he let that go so easily. But the King Gambit is a problem. Okay. Now. 
Cinderace is pretty much free versus everything now. So, yeah, the Enamorous was dead anyway, if it was... Especially since it was Scarf, rather. Now, this is kind of tough now. Just because he popped my Landorus in the face so hard. Mm. Gambito. What do I do about this? Do I cleave or do I sucker? I think I sucker. Yeah. Five at Terra's, do I still kill? Uh, wrong button. Mmm. 50 50. I don't like that. Ooh. Okay, so I have a decision to make. I think it ends up with the same thing anyway. I think I end up sacking Primarina. No matter what I do here. If I go... But but, I, but the difference being... I would keep my booster energy intact. If I, if I keep Roaring Moon in the back. So I think it's better to take this chance here. Okay, whew. He didn't tear up. I'm nervous that he's Terra Fairy Bolt. <clears throat> he's acting like he specs Raging Bolt as well, so. Okay. This is where Pre Marina gets thrown under the bus here, unfortunately. Balloon is irrelevant because I'm not Earthquake anyways. Mm. It's getting tough. Well, he smokes me here anyway, so it's GG. Rough. Alright, I'm going to stop here. Got a lot to analyze. Thanks for watching, people.